Good morning. Hope you're all having a great day. Welcome and good morning to all those who are with us here live and those who are worshiping with us uh, on live stream. Welcome to Salem Lutheran Church. Uh, I just have a few announcements to make. First of all, welcome back to our organist, Tim Mann, who is worshiping with us here today and playing, leading our worship. Uh, he'll be here also one more Sunday, next Sunday. But I hope you'll offer your thanks to Tim for helping us and leading us in worship. I have a few special requests uh, today. First of all, uh, I got a call from Sam Woods. Uh, he's in the hospital at Worcester Community Hospital. In fact, as soon as church is over, I'm going to stop and see Sam. So keep Sam in your prayers. Uh, I talked to him yesterday on the phone. He's very weak, but he seems to be doing, you know, okay. So keep Sam in your prayers. We also would like to keep the Buchwalder family, or I guess actually the Doty family, in our prayers. Barb was a Doty before she married Bill. And uh, her brother passed away uh, yesterday, suddenly, a massive heart attack. And so we give thanks to God for the years he gave us to know Ted, but we also pray that God will give his comfort and consolation to the Doty family. So our prayers go with you, Barb. Uh, in light of that also, if you have not heard, uh, please keep me in your prayers and my family. Uh, my brother Robert, uh, who was 85 years old, passed away last Sunday. Uh, suddenly. He had Parkinson's, and so I knew it was coming, but even when you know things are coming, it's still uh, sad when the day comes. So uh, please keep the uh, Nathans, uh, his family, Barb, and his children, if I can remember them all, Robert, Mark, Melissa, and uh, the grandchildren, Amanda, Robin, and Jana, and Stephen, grandchildren. So uh, please keep all those people in your prayers and ask that God give them comfort and consolation. Uh, don't forget there's uh, fellowship afterwards, so if you can stop by and stay with us for a while, that would be wonderful. Uh, with that, I, are there any other announcements that need to be made? No? Well, then we begin our worship and we rise, for this is the day the Lord has made. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear now the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. We continue our service with our gathering hymn, Christ is Made the Sure Foundation. If you want the music, it's in the blue hymnal, the blue hymnal, 747. <laughs>
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood said, Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and the light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And we hear God's word. Our first reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 15, 1 through 6. After these things, the words of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliza of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. 
he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to to God. God. Our second reading is from Hebrews chapter 11, 1 through 3, 8 through 16. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the words were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land that he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to this city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born. As many the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as, <clears throat> excuse me, but as it is, they desire a better country, that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. gospel for this Sunday is a reading from the gospel of St. Luke in the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Before I read it, I, I just have to make note of, this is the scriptural basis for one of my favorite hymns. Does anyone remember what that hymn is? Very good. I remember, I love that song. Have no fear, little flock. Have no fear, little flock. The scriptural basis of that hymn is Luke Chapter 12, the first verse. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action. And have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves from whom the master finds alert when he comes. For truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, If the owner of the house had not known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have filled with your presence and joy. 
Oh, Lord, we ask now that you open our hearts and minds to your word that we may hear and learn. As in his name we pray. Amen. You know, for some uh, pretty obvious reasons, uh, this past week I've been thinking a lot about family and people close to me. And uh, not just what you're thinking of as my brother who has passed away, but uh, also this is a very special day coming up for me on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday is my wife's birthday. She would have been 77 had she uh, lived with me all those years. But the Lord took her home, and I think of her fondly. I, I was very blessed. I always tell people I married above my grade. Uh, she was a special person. I, I always remember that she said that one of the reasons that she married me, she was a farm girl from South Dakota, lived on a farm in the middle of nowhere. I mean, Pierre, South Dakota was the closest major city to her, and that was 100 miles away. So she was truly a farm girl. I got pictures of her taking care of pigs and goats and sheep and all that kind of stuff. Father was a big farmer, but she really hated the farm. Uh, and she said that one of the reasons she married me because she figured that her chances of ending up in a big city with her husband was higher since I was a big city guy. I grew up in Cleveland, the west side of Cleveland. And so I remember when I was in my last year at the seminary, they call you in to interview you to kind because of, they, they give you a call. Your first call is not something you negotiate. You're handed an envelope on call day with all the rest of your classmates. You open it up, and that basically tells you where you're going for your first church. At least that's the way it was in my day. So I, we got there, and we were joking about it all the way there, but we assumed we'd be somewhere decent because when I went in, and they asked me where I wanted to go, what I wanted to do in my first church. I said, well, I, I know that the kind of ministry is probably going to be just a small church. That's where 90% of the pastors out of the seminary end up their first call. But I said, I would like to be in one of the corners of the country. You know, the northwest, southwest, northeast, southeast. And so I got my first call, and I opened it up, and I was being sent to Kansas. Now, what makes it even more ironic is the fact that we were only 50 miles away from the geographical center of the United States. And so I always thought, well, they couldn't figure out which corner to send me in, so they sent me equal distance from all of them. But my wife, who was not thrilled about going back to the farm, because that was a small, it was Oakley, Kansas was the name of the parish. And, uh, and when I say Oakley, I don't mean like around just outside Kansas City or outside Wichita. We were in the western part of the state. Our closest major city was Denver, Colorado, which was 250 miles west of us. So we were in the middle of nowhere. The closest city to us, I, I still remember going in. And when, when you get your call, then you go to a room where you or all the other guys who are going to that district, as they used to call them back in those days, and you meet your first bishop. And I remember walking up to him, and I thought, well, Oakley, Kansas, what do I know about Oakley? For all I know, it could be a town of a half a million. You know, and I, so I went up to him and I said, how big is Oakley? And he said, yeah, it's about 2,000. And I went, oh, geez. But I said, don't panic. Might be just, you know, just outside Kansas City for all you know. I said, well, what's the next bigger city close to that? And he said, well, you're only about uh, 25 miles away from Colby. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm 25 miles away from another town I don't know. But don't panic. Maybe that's a town of half a million, right? No, it was a town of 5,000. I said, well, something a little bit bigger than Colby. And he said, well, you're only 90 miles away from Hayes. I went, oh, geez. How big is Hayes? 9,000. Well, bigger than that. Well, you're only 175 miles away from Salina. And I'm thinking, I'm 175 miles away from another town I've never heard of. And that would turn out to be about 40,000. And it kept going, stretching out and out. And finally, I, I found out that I was 250 miles away from Denver. That was the closest major city. But Doris went with me. Never questioned. She packed up, didn't want to go to a rural parish, but she went with her husband to his first parish. And we were there for about three years, three and a half years. And that's where my son was born, in Oakley. And then from there, we packed up and moved back to the St. Louis area, a place called Waterloo, Illinois just across the river from St. Louis. And once again, she left a job. She had started a day school. She was a school teacher by profession, first of all. And she had started a daycare preschool in Oakley. And she left that, followed me to uh, 
Waterloo, Illinois, where once again she was contacted by a, another church there and they wanted a preschool and she went and started another preschool. And we were there about a year and a half or two years and once again I got the chance to move. And so we moved to Belleville, Illinois and she closed up the preschool and moved with me. Never said a word about it. We got to uh, Belleville and husband got a PhD and decided he wanted to step out of the church for a bit and so I became a regional director for children and family services and my wife never said a word. She supported me in all those efforts. And then the opportunity came when I was getting tired of the job I had and I suddenly got a call from uh, Ohio and said, hey, we got this church in Worcester. Of course, I had never heard of Worcester, but I once again came and saw the church and I packed up the bags and my wife packed up the bags and we moved to Worcester, Ohio. But one time towards the end of her life, I was talking to her and I said, you know, you never complained all those moves, you know, from leaving from St. Louis after we were married, going to uh, Oakley, Kansas, to Waterloo, Illinois, to Belleville, Illinois, to Worcester, Ohio, I never once heard you complain. In fact, you left some jobs to come and follow me. I said, why? And she looked at me and she says, because, hon, I always believed in you. I think that's something nice for a wife to tell her husband. She always believed in me and she always trusted me. Well, the reason I'm telling you that story, because it really, our, our lesson, the Old Testament lesson that you heard Amanda read, from the book of Genesis is really talking about faith. And what is faith? Well, the best definition I ever heard of faith, I heard on TV. I was watching uh, Young Sheldon. How many of you watch Young Sheldon? Really? Only two? Three, very good, because that's, that's a sort of prequel to what show? Big Bang Theory. How many of you watch Big Bang Theory? Okay, that's, uh, that's still not much better, but... Uh, Anyways, on young Sheldon, uh, the mother was having a crisis of faith. And she was talking to her young boy, Sheldon, and she said, you know, she says, science is something that's up here, but faith is something here. It's something that you believe in spite of having any evidence to prove it. And I think that's probably a good definition. Faith is accepting things as true, even though you have no basis for it, no evidence for it. That's what our Old Testament lesson was about. It's about Abraham. Abraham, who was so remarkable. You know, he had faith, not in a spouse, but he had faith in God. And when God came to him and said, hey, I want you to move, Abraham did exactly what he was said. He was living in Haran. And God said, I want you to move. I'm going to take you to Palestine. He packed up everything, left family behind, left friends behind, left his property behind, his home and he moved to a strange country and reestablished his family once again. Why? Because he had faith in God. That's faith. And now the Old Testament even gives us another example of Abraham's strong faith. God told him that he would be the father of a great nation. Now, I don't know much about being the father of a great nation, but I know in order to be the father of a great nation, it starts with having a few kids or at least one problem with that was that Abraham and his wife Sarah had none, no children. And to make problems worse, they were both very old. According to the Bible, Sarah was in her 90s, not usually the time a woman thinks about starting a family. Not usually when the time when a woman thinks about having children. And yet Abraham believed, he believed that with God, nothing was impossible. Because of that, Abraham will forever be remain, remembered as a man of faith, a man who listened to God and a man who believed. What's the moral of this story? With God, nothing is impossible. You know, I, I have seen that throughout my entire ministry, times when you just have faith that things will work out, put your trust in God, that it happens. I, I remember one time at Zion, when I got there, we had been, for years, working a joint vacation Bible school uh, at, with other churches, like the Methodist Church across the street, the uh, Catholic Church, the Presbyterian Church, and we had this joint vacation Bible school. And it was really kind of cool because it required very few workers from Zion to go work it, 
And whatever children we had who wanted to go went. Well, we never really had a whole lot, but you know, some children went. Well, one year, finally, my director of children's ministry, a gal named Suzanne Miller, Buchwald is a member of the Millers, Suzanne came to me and she said, I want to do my own vacation Bible school. I said, so you want to break off the relations with these other churches' vacation Bible school and uh, have our own vacation Bible school? And she said, yeah. I said, well, you know, Suzanne, that's going to be a lot of work. First of all, I'm not sure we have enough kids who want to go to a vacation Bible school to make it worthwhile, and you're going to have to get a lot of volunteers. She said, I'll handle it. Well, I had faith in Suzanne. And she had faith in God that this would work. She believed it. And so she started, and the first year, we had 47 children attended our vacation Bible school. The second year, we had 68 children attended our vacation Bible school. And by the third year, we were pushing 100. Not only that, but I had been worried about volunteers. First year, 40 people in the church volunteered to help at our vacation Bible school. And the number grew every year. What a blessing that ministry turned out to be. All because of a demonstration of faith that Suzanne had and how she taught her pastor to just trust in God. What's the moral of the story? If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. You can say to this mountain, move, and it will move. If you have but faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this ocean, part, and it will part. You know, I continue to believe that God is a maker of miracles. And I continue to believe that God has plans for this parish. Miracles to perform here. Because with God, nothing is impossible. No barrier is too high for our God to lift us over. If you believe, just believe like that old man Abraham. No barrier is too high to overcome. No project is too great. If you simply believe... If it is God's plan, it will happen. But as much as that is true of the Old Testament, as much as that is true of our lives as church, it also can be true in our own personal lives. Do you believe in God? That was a question, by the way. Do you believe in God? Now, I don't mean do you believe there's a God in heaven. No, I mean do you believe that there is a God who takes a deep and personal interest in in your life? Do you believe that there is a God for whom nothing is impossible? Do you believe that there is a God that can help you overcome whatever you're facing right now? Do you believe there is that kind of God? Do you believe that there is no financial crisis that cannot be solved by your God? Do you believe that there is no family problem that cannot be solved by your God? Do you believe that there is not a single health issue problem that cannot be solved by your God? Do you believe that your God is a mighty God? And that with him, nothing is impossible. When things get their bleakest, do you turn to your God in prayer? And do you turn those problems over to him? And then do you believe? Do you believe that with God nothing is impossible? Do you really believe that? You see, God is waiting for you. Waiting with a pocket full of miracles. All that you have to do is have faith. Have faith like Abraham. Believe. But that's the problem so often. Sometimes we, including myself, lack that kind of faith. Well then... We should pray for a God of miracles. I, I always remember uh, a show, and I think I've mentioned this story many times, but I always remember the uh, show that was on TV called uh, Actor's Studio, in which the uh, commentator or the moderator had a famous director or actor or actress come, and, and he would ask him questions. And at the end of the show, it was an hour long, uh, he would ask him a series of questions, the same questions to each actor, director, whatever, each time. And one of the questions always was, if there is a God in heaven, what would you like to have be the first thing that he says to you? And the most interesting answer, I thought, was given by Steven Spielberg, the renowned director, director of Close Encounters of the Third Kind, E.T., Raiders of the Lost Ark, etc. And uh, his response was, I would like to hear God say to me, thanks for listening. 
Thanks for listening. That should be our prayer. Thank you, God, for listening. Because God is a God of miracles who can lift us up on eagle's wings. So with that, I'd like to ask you all to join me in a prayer to close off my thoughts. So please join me. Lord, sometimes I doubt. Sometimes it is hard for me to believe. When I am surrounded by doubters and when everything around me says that the only one I can believe in, the only one I can trust is me, Lord, give me faith. Help me believe that you love me, that you are always there for me, that you have a pocket full of miracles for me. Give me that kind of faith. And, O oh Lord, when the miracles come, let me recognize them. Amen. We continue our service with our next hymn, which again is from the Blue Hymnal. This time it's 756, if you want the music. And the song is one of my favorites. Lord, you give the Great Commission.
Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. your loving kindness be upon your church. Fill all who proclaim the gospel with your spirit. Equip your flock to speak your word of promise and hope in the midst of fear and uncertainty. Let your loving kindness be upon your creation. Dwell among us and sustain our earthly home. In places of famine, provide nourishment. In places of plenty, fashion us to be good stewards of your bounty. Let your loving kindness be upon your world. Be our helper and our shield in places torn by strife and violence. Raise up courageous leaders to govern with compassion and justice. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place Lord listen to your children praying send us love send us power send us grace let your loving kindness be upon your children look upon all who wait for your steadfast love Console those who grieve and embrace those who cry out to you, especially Alan and his family, Barb and her family, Sam, Joyce, Beverly, Amanda, Barbara, Monica, Lynn, Sue, Triton and his family, Bill, Marion, Jean, Tony, the family of Sharon, the family of Zachary, family of Andy, Robert, and George, and those whom we now name aloud or in our hearts. Help us to trust your promise and not be afraid. Let your loving kindness be upon this community. Fashion our hearts to strive for the way of peace. 
strengthen the outreach ministries of this congregation and all who care for those in need. With thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you. As they place their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. Hear us, O oh God. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's take a moment and share that peace with one another. Thank you for joining us this peace. Sunday for our Sunday live stream service. This is the time that we will be passing the offering plate. I encourage you to make a contribution to Salem Lutheran Church either by check or by using our PayPal button that is found on our slcw.org website. Thank you in advance, and I now return you to our service.
us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, Open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. O God most mighty, O God most merciful, O God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise. Call us to your table. Grant us your life. For when the world was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation. David fought Goliath, and the psalmist cried out for healing. And full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. O oh God, you are breath. Send your spirit on this meal. O oh God, you are bread, feed us with yourself. O oh God, you are wine, warm our hearts and make us one. O oh God, you are fire, transform us with hope. O oh God, most majestic, O oh God, most motherly, O oh God, our strength and our song, you show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit, of our risen Savior, life in you now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ. Now take and eat, for this is the body of Christ. Take and drink the blood of Christ. Let us rise in prayer. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now receive the blessings of our Lord. For the God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. We conclude our service with our sending him. Once again, from the blue hymnal, 771, if you want the music. Great is thy faithfulness.
Well, it was good being with you again, and we want to thank Tim Mann for being our organist. He always does a great job, always did a great job at Zion, and it's nice to hear him again, nice to see him again. I've learned all the things about his family once again, his wife, and she still loves him. I've never understood that, but that's okay, right? She still loves you, right, Tim? Okay, good. Anyway, anyways, I hope you'll all remember our prayers this week, though, those families who need your prayers, uh, Sam Woods and his family, uh, the Doty family, and the Nathan family. So until we see each other again, go in peace, love your neighbor. Thanks, be to God.